I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to use our algorithm of curve sketching and sketch a curve for the given function. Function for us is f of x equals to 1 over x square minus 6x. Now the algorithm has many things to consider. Right? So there are a few things which I'd like to you know make note of. And I hope this is going to really help you to save some time in your test also. When you study algorithm, you find that there are first as you find x and uh, y intercept. That is kind of important to find, to sketch a curve. You are also required to find asymptotes, right? So all kinds of asymptotes. So once you find asymptotes, you need to figure out behavior near asymptotes. This is very important, especially when you have a rational function, right? Behavior near asymptotes. Then you do first derivative test. With that, you can find local maximum or local minimums. And then you do the second derivative to find, uh, I should say, a point of inflection, right? That also gives you concavity. So basically these are the steps involved for sketching a good graph for a given function. Now what is also important to understand is what to do and what not to do, right? That really helps you to uh, save time in test paper and therefore I'm calling this as tips for test. Right, so test tips for test paper. So I'll give you a few tips with the help of this example. They'll really help you to save time in test paper. Now let's begin uh, from the very beginning. So let's find the x and y intercepts. In this particular case, since the denominator is of higher degree, we know horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. So I'm jumping to this part. Now, as far as x and y intercepts is concerned, numerator, you know, is 1. It can never be 0, right? So, so if we have no x-intercept, right, that is first no x-intercept. So that is important to understand that the graph does not really cross the x-axis. How about the y-intercept? If I write 0 here, then in that case it is undefined so we have no x-intercept and we have no y-intercept right so that is that is very clear so both x and y-intercept do not exist in this particular case right let's go to asymptotes now as far as asymptotes are concerned since the degree of denominator is much higher we have horizontal asymptote and the equation of horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0, right? So, so we get y equals to 0 as horizontal asymptote. We also have vertical asymptotes since the denominator could be 0 for two values. Let us write down this function as in factored form to help us uh, find the y-intercepts, I mean vertical asymptotes. We could factor x, so then you get x minus 6. Clearly there are two vertical asymptotes, right? So we have a horizontal asymptote and as far as vertical asymptotes are concerned, there are two vertical asymptotes. One of them is at x equals to 0, the other one is at x equals to 6. So these are the two x, uh, I mean vertical asymptotes. Okay. Now let us analyze this stage. Now whenever there are rational functions, this is a very important stage to analyze. We should find behavior near the asymptotes at this stage. So let me also make a small sketch here, a rough sketch I should say, and that really helps us to figure out how the graph should look like. So what we have got here is horizontal asymptote which is y equals to 0, vertical asymptotes which is x equals to 0 and x equals to 6. So somewhere here, right? So I'm just making a rough sketch here. I have very limited space. So 
uh, I'll just confine myself to an approximate sketch right there. Now let's look into the behavior near the asymptotes. Now as x approaches minus infinity, what happens? If I put a sub I substitute a large negative value, for example minus 100, then this port part will be negative, this will also be negative, so we get positive, correct? So that means we are approaching from the positive side, so like this. So we say f of x approaches 0 from positive side. When x approaches positive infinity, in that case both will be positive and in that case also f of x will approach 0 from positive side. So that is kind of end behavior. Right, so this is the analysis of end behavior, which is near the horizontal asymptote. Now we will consider vertical asymptote. So let us approach zero from left side. That is to say, if I find limit of the function, that is limit as x approaches zero from left side for the function. That means I can substitute a value which is negative, let us say 0.1. In that case, in this particular function, negative value will give me this is 0, this is positive. Negative of negative will be positive, so the function will be positive, right? So that means the function approaches positive infinity, right? So, so we say uh, that for that, uh, the limit is positive infinity, right? If I substitute a value which is slightly more than 0, if this is positive, in that case, what we expect here is, if this is a small positive number, right, in that case, what we really have here is positive and this is going to be negative. Since x is small, right, let's say 0.1, then this will be negative. So at this point, it is approaching negative infinity. So this limit is negative infinity. Similarly, let us analyze on left and right side of 6 also. So the limit of the function as x approaches 6 from the left side is what? So if I substitute a value, let us say 5.9, then 5.9 is positive, but this makes negative. So we get negative value. And in that case, the function will be approaching negative infinity, right? So this is negative infinity. Limit of the function as x approaches 6 from the right side, both are positive, right? So that will give us positive infinity, right? So that is how the function is. Now when you analyze this part, you see that the function is could be drawn like this, correct? So you could always sketch this graph on the left and right side right this is this is your graph basically right so that is how you get your graph on the left side and right side of the two asymptotes now in between we can clearly see that there is no x intercept therefore the function has to turn from somewhere in between right so it is going to be kind of like this i'm just sketching it and showing you that it has to be like this what we need to find is that point and this point is local maximum. To find local maximum, we need to analyze the first derivative. And therefore, first derivative is a must for us, correct? So let's find the first derivative of the function. So we have f prime x equals to, we can apply the quotient rule. It is x squared minus 6x whole square. Derivative of 1 is 0 minus 1 times derivative of this function, which is 2x minus 6, right? So that becomes the derivative, which could be written as minus 2x plus 6 over x squared minus 6x whole square, right? So that is, that is it. So we are looking for a local maximum, which is between 1 and 6, right? So this is what we're looking for uh, between 0 and 6, right? So that is what it is. So from here clearly we see that there is a critical number 
at x equals to 3, right? So, so we the numerator is 0 for critical number x equals to 3. So, minus 2x plus 6 equals to 0 gives us x equals to 3. So, that is a critical number for us. So, let us analyze on both sides of the critical number 3. So, what do we get? So, let's say this is the critical number 3 for us. We can take a value which is less than 3 and we can take a value which is more than 3. Let us say the value is 3.1 and 2.9. If I substitute 2.9 here, in that case, we know numerator, denominator is always positive. So, let's analyze numerator. So, if I write a value which is less than 3, so this will be minus thing will be lesser than 6. So, we get positive here, right? So, this will result a positive quantity. But if I write more than 3, 3.1, 3 it will be minus 6.2 plus 6, which is minus. So, we get negative. So, that clearly indicates that when you analyze your first derivative, we have a pattern of increasing and then decreasing. That gives you local maximum at x equals to 3, right? So, that is the value. Now, to find the value at 3, we can substitute 3 in the function and then get the values. We get 1 over 3 square minus 6 times 3, which is 1 over 9 minus 6 times 3 is 18. So, we get answer as minus 1 over 9. So, this value here should be minus 1 over 9, right? So, that completes our sketch of the graph, right? Now, we do not need to find the second derivative or look even for point of inflection and concavities in this particular example. When we are done at this stage, or we have the sketch of the graph which is required. So, my request is that do not, let me write here, begin bold, do not analyze. second derivative. No need, right? Because you got your function right there. In a test, do not analyze second derivative. And only because of this, I have put this video at this stage. You should be in a good position to make a judgment and use the parts of the algorithm which are required for sketching the graph. Uh, do not do extra things which are not going to help you to sketch a better graph. With that, I like to close this video. I hope you understand and appreciate the idea. Thank you and all the best.